All right. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Sven from House of Secrets. We're a uh, visual effects and <laughs> animation studio. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to show you some of the work we did the uh, last couple of years using uh, Aeon's Fusion. Now, let me start off with a shot from a rebranding campaign for the Dutch uh, television channel uh, Nederland 3. These were five movies uh, playing back to back, and for three of those, we did the visual effects. Now, let me start off by playing this for you so you have a vague idea what I'm talking about. There you go. Now, a pretty straightforward shot. You've got your live action plate and a uh, collection of CG footage on top of that. Now, as you can see, this was the plate we got. And it had to turn into this one. Now, we ran into trouble quite early on because at the time, the, uh, we didn't have the red uh, camera yet. So it was shot on 16 millimeter. Now, the problem with 16 millimeter is that sometimes the film back uh, jitters a bit. Now, that wouldn't be too big a problem if we, on, if we had a complete plate already, but we had to restore it. So when you would uh, insert this side on top of, the, of this plate, you would actually see separation edges moving. So we had to stabilize all those plates first. Now, after that was done, we could easily uh, insert a piece of wall using some color correctors and some transforms to create this. We did the same for the right wall. And as you can see over here, there's a small plant that's supposed to be a cannon. That's restored from this plate. It's a small hint as to why the guy is wearing the riot shield and what he's expecting to come out of the television. And every movie is assaulted by something that comes out of the television. In this case, he's expecting a cannonball. But of course, it's going to be a plant. Now, here's the final restored plate. Of course, again with some color correctors and some masking tools. And some restoration remove light fixtures and zoom in a bit so the floor is restored as well. Now on top of that we add two uh, shadow maps rendered in 3D. Uh, the entire room was rotoscoped, uh, the chair, the television walls and the guy as well. So we could render uh, um, reflection maps and shadow maps quite easily and insert those. Now I'm going to show you a sharp shadow map using the uh, using 3D spotlights to simulate the light on the set and we also shot some HDR files, photos and use a global illumination or photo mapping to uh, render out a, a somewhat softer uh, shadow map using the correct lighting. Now I merged those together to form this shadow map and with some masking insert that on top of our plate. Here are the masking tools to prevent shadows from appearing where they're not supposed to be, as you can see over here. Now, on top of this, we add our uh, reflection maps we rendered out in 3D. This was done uh, because we wanted to uh, add the plant and make it sure it matches nicely with our live action plate. Now, the guy is wearing a glass visor and, of course, a glass riot shield, so of course you would see a reflection of the plant in that. You'll also notice that the floor is slightly reflective and we wanted to make sure the plant was visible in that as well. Now, these are very subtle effects, as I'll show you over here. But, as you can see, it does add to the final look. I'm going to show you over here while it's moving. As you can see over the floor, a nice reflection map. Now, once that is done... Oh, let me just there we go we add our CG plant now we rendered out as much as possible uh, as much as uh, as much uh, channels and uh, renders as possible like the RGB mat and some uh, uh, small fix a detail map a ambient map a raw RGB map some subsurface scatter map which absor uh, shows the absorbance uh, absorbing of the light on the plant itself a diffuse map for the spotlights, and of course a diffuse map for the uh, HDR file. 
<coughs> now we start off with the RGB map and merge that together with the uh, subsurface scatter map, which gives a... Uh, it's all very subtle, but it does add to the final feel, as you can see. On top of that, the ambient map, also very subtle. And of course, the diffuse map, which gets blended together. The, we blend these two together to form a nice final look like this. On top of that, we add our detail map to fill in some small nice dirt. Now, at this point, you'll notice that the leaves are quite flat and our studio lighting is quite harsh, as you can see on the, guy, uh, on the guy's visor. So these highlights had to be brought in as well. So in order to do that, again, we rendered two specular passes for the lighting. We blended those together as well to form the final image like this. Now, at this point, you'll notice that uh, the live action plate has, of course, has motion blur, and our CG plate doesn't. Now, what we usually do, or CG plate doesn't, what we do is we render out a motion vector pass, which describes uh, motion uh, per pixel by using the red channel for uh, X motion of the pixel and the green channel for the Y motion. Now we use Real Smart Motion Blur from Revision Effects, which uses that motion vector data to compute a nice looking motion blur, which you can see over here. There you go. Another nice thing about this is when, uh, since this is on such a dead tight deadline and you would make a small mistake, like for example, you uh, fill in a wrong uh, shutter angle. Rather than re-rendering everything in the 3D engine, we can simply change the blur amount over here. In this case, one is a shutter angle of 180. Now, after we've done that, we're going to color correct this with the use of our RGB mat to color correct uh, separate parts. Now, here we go. We color correct the vines a bit, the leaves a bit, some extra color corrections over here for shadowing. Make sure it fits into the plate nicely. And some shadowing over here. On top of that, a slight blur because the uh, CG footage always tends to be very sharp and your uh, film uh, scans usually aren't. And on top of that, a slight film grain. And then we insert it on top of our live action plate and it looks like this. Now at this point you'll notice the TV has to be filled in a bit as well. And we do it like so. There is some small fixes over here for the the edges that are moving, which you can't see that well. Oh, here you go. We take the entire plate, scale it up a bit, place it underneath, and there you go. We fill in those small edges. These edges appeared because we stabilized the plate, and so it's moving about a bit, the, your edge. That's what we use that for. Now, underneath over here, you'll see a couple of color correctors. Uh, we create these. Uh, since the final grading wasn't done by us, we had to have a vague idea of what the final grading would look like. This was the final grading. So we created, we recreated the uh, grading a bit, so we would be, uh, we would, we were sure we wouldn't uh, you know, spend too much time on areas you wouldn't notice anyway, so we wouldn't put in too much detail in areas that are going to be pretty much, well, black or too dark to notice on a television. And there you go. And the final render again. 